today's webcast, let's, uh, I'm going to address, I guess, Martin's questions and uh, some other topics too. Um, it's had a company uh, vocals, either your own or another singer using the accordion. Um, so I'll cover some of those techniques. It's part of a much larger lesson, I think. Uh, but I'll start today just by showing some of the basics and some of the foundation. And then uh, we'll also look at how to build up speed. Uh, I'm not sure if it was uh, Martin or Jonathan that asked how to do that, but how to build, build up speed. I'll show you some techniques on practicing. Uh, sort of what worked for me and then um, that, that should work for you as well. Again, if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, but let's start off with um, how to accompany vocals uh, on the accordion. So the accordion is not, um, it's not like a guitar. Typically when you have a singer, they'll sit with a guitar, which is a stringed instrument, and the strings are really gentle, and they'll get a rhythm, and the voice goes really well over a guitar, for example, or even over a light piano. Um, over an accordion, it's a little bit tougher, uh, and what that means is that you just have to have a sensitivity, whether you're singing yourself or whether someone else is singing, it just means having sensitivity in how loud you play, just because the instrument can get very loud, uh, and what you play, because you can be a one-man band, really, with the accordion, you need to have that sensitivity. So let me show you some techniques. Uh, I don't have a great singing voice, uh, but, but I'll sing just, uh, just for, this, um, for this webcast. Uh, my wife sings, um, I usually accompany her on the piano or on the accordion or guitar. So let's choose a song. We just did a tutorial on Hallelujah. Um, let's also choose the song Imagine by John Lennon. Um, typically, you know, in a group setting, around a campfire, around a party, if you want to sing or even just for yourself, those are two really nice songs. Imagine by John Lennon and Hallelujah. So one idea is to first um, know the song. And know the song means to know its lyrics by heart, if, if possible, or reading off a piece of paper, um, and to know the chords and the chord changes really, really well. Uh, Martin, I guess you wrote that, um, what I often do as well is I go onto guitar chord websites like Ultimate Guitar, and I'll pull up the chords for Leonard Cohen, Hallelujah, or John Lennon, Imagine. Um, and then I play the song through a few times until I know it. So let's say Imagine is C to F and C to F. So it sounds like... Right? So, yeah, that, that's what it sounds like. Um, the thing to remember is that you're going... The, the melody, you don't have to play the melody because your voice will be the melody. So then the job of the accordion is to play lightly in the background, just enough to, to give a surface so that your voice can go on top of it. Uh, so in terms of how I build that, let's say for a song like Imagine, is I'll just start off playing the chords in my left hand, and really sparse. So nothing big, nothing big like that, but you know, for Imagine it would be... So it's C, 2, F, and just sing over that. So imagine there's no countries. Do, 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 do. It's easy if you try. Right? That sounds really sparse, and that's nice. You can go on the whole song like that if you'd like, but 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 you can do more. You can do more and still be sensitive to the song. And what more means is starting to introduce the right hand. Uh, starting again really sparse if you want, which is trying to replicate the lick from the song. And then imagine we have a really... Uh, so what that sounds like is... Imagine there's no countries. It's easy if you try. Just to get uh, listeners, and maybe even yourself, um, more accustomed to the song. They can look forward to that little lick. Um, you can also start filling in the chords. doesn't mean doing that necessarily, but uh, introducing them as pads. P-A-D-S. Uh, and it's almost like a synthesizer pads. Uh, and what that means is just sustaining the chords. So C. 
F. And in terms of what sound I'm using, I'm not choosing a very heavy sound that's gonna that's gonna gyrate too much. I'm choosing my musette sound. If you have other sounds, let's say a violin or clarinet or musette. Yeah, that sounds nice. So it'll, it will float really nicely. Imagine there's no countries. It's easy if you try. No hell below us. So you can remove the pads and then maybe bring them in again. Above us only sky. So that's one idea. So again, the whole song I'm doing this really simple bass line. Um, we did learn about the legato bass technique. It's okay to use the legato bass technique. So, above us only sky, not legato. Imagine all the people living for today. So it's mixing up those two. Instead of the staccato we had before, you can start. Legato and maybe even just sustained chords there. Um, with the right hand, again, I'm keeping it light, pads. I'm not playing the melody at all. All I'm doing is these rhythms. Imagine a guitar player strumming, which is. For a song like Hallelujah, where it's where it's a waltz, great. You would start off with a waltz on the left hand, and then you would start singing um, again, either voice over left hand. I guess it's a nice way to start. I heard there was a secret chord that David played, and it pleased the Lord. And maybe now introduce some pads. You don't really care for music, do ya? Even single notes. It goes like this: the fourth, the fifth, the minor fall, and the major So this song does, you know, it's nice to have the pads under Hallelujah. Just it, it sounds kind of nice. Um, having said that, it's totally up to you to change the song to to what you'd like. So I have played Hallelujah. Um, almost like a reggae song, just because accordion works really well like that, right? Your faith was strong, but you needed proof. Or do a um papa. You saw her bathing on the roof. Two pads. Beauty and the moonlight overflow ya. Um, in terms of playing melody with your right hand, just be careful. Um, whether you're accompanying a singer uh, or yourself, let's say for the actual chorus. So it's hallelujah. So it sounds like this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that's what it's like to accompany yourself with a melody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I wouldn't accompany yourself with melody for the whole song, meaning uh, your faith was strong but you needed proof. Leave your voice to do that, let the accordion do, do something else to support you. Um, in terms of, let's say a chorus, you could also do the harmony. So it's instead of hallelujah, the accordion can be your harmony, which is hallelujah. Uh, you just have to practice that, which is hallelujah. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Uh, but again, 
especially if you're seeing with someone else, um, I see that you have a question, especially if you're seeing with someone else, make sure they know which harmony you're going to take, just because it's confusing. As, as you just saw, I, it needs a lot of practice. I can't do it off the top of my head, just the harmony. Uh, we have a question. Do you suggest use only left hand for learning purpose? I have a hard time to play left uh, chords in the right and sing along. For sure. Uh, really break it down into, let's say, just left hand. Uh, for a song like Hey Jude. It might mean not even doing the rhythm. It might just mean printing out the, the lyrics or the chords and going, Hey Jude, don't make it bad. Take a sad song and make it better. Remember to let her into your heart. Once you know those chords, maybe even play, instead of singing, so you know, starting either playing, instead of singing the melody, playing with your hand or vice versa, but yeah, stay with the left hand only, totally fine. Um, I find that unless I know the song in my head, meaning I've probably been listening to it for a few weeks, or really on constant uh, playback, I, I don't know the song well enough to sing and to play with the right hand chords as well. So really, totally okay to play just the left hand chords. Uh, do you have a song in mind that you play, Martin? <laughs> That's okay. Um, my suggestion, uh, children's songs are really straightforward, just because they have one or two chords. Um, Mary Had a Little Lamb, or The Wheels on the Bus Go Round and Round. Um, it really is just, you know, uh, Mary had a little lamb, little lamb, little lamb. And you do that twice. Um, and then I, I guess one way to learn that is just to maybe play sustained chords with your right hand. So, Mary had a little lamb. If, if, if that's too fast, then, then, you know, then slow it down, break it down again to left-hand sections and right-hand sections. Yeah, I'll explain pads in a little bit more detail. Yeah, so, so, so two questions. Uh, one, just to, to keep going about the part about accompanying. So there's a question, I'm often in a situation that a friend will bring, bring lyrics and chords for a guitar and they want to sing along, but I don't know the melody well, so I need to improvise and accompany them. It's a really tough situation. Um, it's a tough situation, again, I guess going back, the, the, first, the first thing is to know the song. If you don't know the song, it's really tough. Uh, I, I have a friend who is uh, from Brazil, and he brought me uh, chords for uh, Jubim songs. I, I knew all the chords, he explained the rhythms, I, I didn't feel the song, I didn't know it. So all I could do is play the chords. You know, it's F to G to D to a minor. It, it doesn't sound like a song. So for them, it's hard to play. Just because I guess, as someone who's providing the rhythm, so when your friends bring you chords, if you, if you don't know the song, it's gonna be really tough. Um, if it is, if you do know the song, um, Try and stay consistent. So, in, in case your friends bring you the chords for a guitar and they want to sing along, if it's you know, if it's just like, keep it really simple, which is just you know, I heard the news today, old boy. Even if I didn't know the song, I would just try and stay on rhythm, on beat, not do pads, not do any of the melody, but just provide that. That, uh, you're almost playing percussion with different chords. Um, yeah, I wouldn't try anything too fancy. Um, in terms of the right hand chords, the pads, so pads are just chords that are going to be sustained. Uh, a pipe organ, you know, if I was to play minor on a pipe organ, it would just be a pa, pa. So that's what pads are on an accordion. Uh, how I do that is uh, with quite a light touch, so Imagine a swell. So you're not going to start off 
full volume, you're going to rise, keep the pad, and then take it out. So... So this is um, Aha Take On Me. On my right hand, I'm doing those pads, and what it is is knowing the chords A minor, D, G, C, and and what I'm doing there is trying to transition from chord to chord as smoothly as possible. So, uh, in terms of that song, that's how the pads work, which is. as opposed to which which works too right but then maybe for the chorus i would do pads which is Does that answer the, the question, Jonathan? Is that, is that a bit clear, just in terms of pads versus, versus not pads? And, and, and by the way, I guess just if you do have a song uh, that, that you're wondering how to accompany next time you're at a party, or if you have a song that you really want to learn, uh, shoot me an email. I'll do a really quick video tutorial on sort of here's what the chord sounds like. If I know the song, here's what I would do with it. Um, yeah, and again, it's totally up to you. I've had, w when I do sing in a, in a group, um, if the song doesn't lend itself, if it's a sad song, or I don't want to just sit there quietly like that, you can always introduce the... That rhythm works really well for a rock song. Versus, right, especially if you're with people, you don't be afraid to introduce them like that. Bass tone, tone, bass tone, tone, bass tone. Yeah, and the pads do really lead towards vocal accompaniment, for sure. Uh, as well as that, that sensitivity. Great, so we have some time. Uh, if you want, uh, obviously keep, keep asking questions. If we do run out of time, I can answer you uh, over email or in another video. Let's move on to how to build up speed. Um, yeah, so we'll leave accompanying vocals and we'll try and tackle uh, speed. So speed, uh, I'm assuming I didn't, I didn't get uh, an answer back as to speed on the left hand, right hand, playing an entire song. But speed, I'm assuming, means how to play quickly, especially with the right hand. Um, yeah, so, so you know, especially let's say in klezmer songs that I play. That's speed. So I'll, I'll move back a few steps and go over the foundation of what's required to play quickly. Um, and I think it's a, it's a knowledge and comfort of the side that's playing quickly. In, in this case, the right hand. Uh, left hand, you know, going like this. You sit there, even with the accordion closed for, for a day, and, and you'll get fast. Uh, the right hand, to me at least right now, is, is more complex. Um, so, uh, what I do, uh, I guess I come from a piano background, so, so books, I just looked at my piano bench and there's a book here called, uh, what's it called, A Dozen a Day, Technical Exercises for the Piano to be Done Each Day Before Practicing. Um, and, and what these are, let me open them and, and do a few, if you want I can scan these after, but what they are is, are exercises that are scales, triads, 
um, and some uh, patterns. So really they start off with, I don't know if you could, you could see that, uh, it's an exercise in scales and then it's an exercise in, in arranging notes differently and practicing them correctly and slowly. Um, correctly means with a correct fingering, especially when you're crossing over, uh, and slowly so that it's correct and then slowly building up speed. So one exercise here is just that's really what the exercise is. It's for the piano. Uh, and, and these are piano books. So just as a, as a quick answer, get a children's or an adult piano book for learning the right hand of the accordion of, of the piano. You can ignore the left hand of the piano and follow those exercises. What, what piano books, books have are fingerings. So they'll show you which finger to use. There it says a small case one um, and how to cross over. So for example, if I'm playing the scale, um, you know, it's one, two, three, four, five. A scale would be one, two, three, one, two, three, four. So five, four, three, two, one, three, two, one, four, three, two, one, three, two, one. In terms of the fingering, um, when you do that very slowly, you can build up speed. And obviously faster, so speed is not my specialty. But again, practicing with a book, looking at it first, making sure that, uh, even if you don't sight read, I guess just getting a book for uh, for the correct fingering. And these guys have great variations on exercises. So scales are the basics. It's just going each note, which is do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, si, do. Uh, and I would stick to C major. But playing it correctly. Then they go into, uh, this song's called skipping, which is... using your one, three, and five, and playing the triad. Um, triad means three, I guess it's the, the chord broken up into three. So the major triads first, C major. And playing it, sorry, with the correct fingering, which is one, three, five. Then you can move on to um, sorry, that, that's what was written down. My exercise that really I, I, I used to do a lot more was playing trides for, for C major for two octaves, which looks like this. And so again, that's these three, these three, these three, and these three. So it's C, E, and G, the different variations. And I play triads broken. One, two, three, one, two, three, five. One, three, five. One, three, five. And really, speed will come with practice. So start that slowly, make sure your fingers are correct. And that you're transferring your your fingers, your fingers correctly over and under. And out of that will come speed. Those are broken triads. You can also do triads that are together, which means... Um, in this book they have other exercises, which is this one's called jumping. So that was, you know, one, one, two, two, three, 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 meaning one note, two notes, three notes. Uh, some other exercises they have. This one's called cartwheels. I don't know why it's called that. Oh, it's all the way. So it's developing the dexterity in your fingers to go from C to C with notes in between. 
let's see what else they have. So, so really, I guess picking this up, I got this when we bought the piano. Um, it was just inside the, the piano bench. But I guess any garage sale um, would, have, would have these. Uh, this one's called Hopping on the Right Foot, which is... And next time I would try and do the... So the correct fingering. Uh, so those are try it. And then the patterns are, you know, we did this. I would start doing the variations on that. So if this is one, three, five... Uh, octave eight, try and do variations on it, which look like this. So one, five, three, five, one, five, three, five. Or you could do. So one, five, three, five, eight, five, three, five, one, five, three, five, eight, five, three, five, one. Those are majors and then obviously minors. Uh, once you have that again, change chords. So figure out two or three chords, D minor to G minor. I don't know if that answered uh, the question, but again, I guess it's building up your fingers dexterity through those exercises so that when a song comes, like that klezmer one, that beginning is really just uh, a triad or a full, you know, it's D minor. So my fingers already know that spacing and which fingers to use. centered around the minor, I always have fingers to spare and obviously start very slowly but I can, I can speed it up fairly, fairly easily. Um, and again it's that familiarity. Uh, another klezmer song though. I know it's based around the scale though. So when it does come time to play the song, I could, I could play it quickly because my fingers know right so that I would practice very very slowly um, in the right key until my fingers get that dexterity um, just in case other people uh, or just in case you need to go and, and learn to go as well um, if you have any questions, please email me directly or post a message in the Patreon, and I'd be happy to, to do a video or, or another lesson. Um, we can also do, obviously, more webcasts. I'm very happy to do them. I'm happy that you guys came out, and I'll make the recording available online right after. Uh, yeah, so really, thank you for showing up, um, and I'll see you next uh, in a few weeks. Bye-bye.